lead their best lives, healthy, safe, and free to follow their dreams. Just think, when Planned Parenthood was founded, women couldn't vote or serve on juries in most states. It was illegal even to provide information about birth control, let alone prescribe it. But people marched and organized. They protested unjust laws and in some cases even went to prison. And slowly but surely, America changed for the better. 51 years ago this week, Thanks to a Planned Parenthood employee named Estelle Griswold. The Supreme Court legalized birth control for married couples across America. When I used to teach law and I would point to this case, a look of total bewilderment <laughs> would come across my students' faces. And not long after that, Roe v. Wade guaranteed the right to safe legal abortion so young women were no longer dying in emergency rooms and back alleys from botched illegal abortions. And this is a fact that is not often heard, but I hope you will repeat it. America's maternal mortality rate dropped dramatically. And it turns out, being able to plan their families not only saved women's lives, it also transformed them. Because it meant that women were able to get educations, build careers, enter new fields, and rise as far as their talent and hard work would take them. All the opportunities that follow when women are able to stay healthy and choose whether and when to become mothers. And you know so well today the percentage of women who finish college is six times what it was before birth control was legal. Women represent half of all college graduates in America and nearly half our labor force. And our whole economy then is better off. The movement of women into the workforce, the paid workforce, over the past 40 years was responsible for more than three and a half trillion dollars in growth in our economy. And here's another fact that doesn't get enough attention. Unintended pregnancy, teen pregnancy, and abortion rates are at all-time record lows. <laughs> that reality and studies confirm what Planned Parenthood knew all along. Accurate sex education and effective, affordable contraception work. And you know, it wasn't so long ago that Republicans and Democrats actually stood together on these issues. Back in the 90s, when I helped create the national campaign to prevent teen pregnancy, I worked with Republicans to get it done. Now things feel quite different now, don't they? Instead of working to continue the progress we've made, Republicans, led now by Donald Trump, are working to reverse it. When Donald Trump says, let's make America great again, that is code for let's take America backward. Back to a time when opportunity and dignity were reserved for some, not all. Back to the days when abortion was illegal, women had far fewer options, and life for too many women and girls was limited. 
Well, Donald, those days are over. We are not going, we are not going to let Donald Trump or anyone else turn back the clock. And that means we've got to get to work. Because as you know better than anyone, right now, across the country, rights that women should be able to take for granted are under attack. Any day now, the Supreme Court will rule on the Texas law that imposes burdensome and medically unnecessary requirements on abortion providers. If these restrictions are allowed to stand, 5.4 million women of reproductive age will be left with about 10 health centers that provide abortion in a state the size of France. It is the biggest challenge to Roe v. Wade in a generation. It's also yet another reminder of what's at stake on the Supreme Court. President Obama has done his job and nominated Merrick Garland to be the ninth justice. It's time for the Senate Republicans to do their job. The Senate should give Judge Garland the hearing he deserves. Now, meanwhile, in just the first three months of 2016, states across the country introduced more than 400 restrictions on abortion. 11 states have defunded Planned Parenthood in the last year, cutting some women off from their only health care provider. And of course, on a national level, Republicans in Congress have been willing to shut down the entire federal government over Planned Parenthood funding. Have you ever noticed that the same politicians who are against sex education, birth control, and safe and legal abortion are also against policies that would make it easier to raise a child like paid family leave? <laughs> They are for limited government everywhere, except when it comes to interfering with women's choices and rights. Well, I'm here today to tell you we need to be just as determined as they are. We need to defend Planned Parenthood against partisan attacks. If right-wing politicians actually cared as much about protecting women's health, as they say they do, they join me in calling for more federal funding for Planned Parenthood. <clears throat> we also need to fight back against the erosion of reproductive rights at the federal, state, and local levels ensure that patients and staff can safely walk into health centers without harassment or violence. We need to, we need to stand up for access to affordable contraception without interference from politicians or employers. And let's invest in long-acting reversible contraceptives so every woman can choose the method that is best for her. Let's strengthen and improve the Affordable Care Act, which covers 20 million Americans and saves women millions of dollars through no copay preventive care. And let's take action to stop the spread of the Zika virus, which threatens the health of children and pregnant women. Let's repeal laws like the Hyde Amendment that make it nearly impossible. Oh 
make it nearly impossible for low-income women, disproportionately women of color, to exercise their full reproductive rights. And it is worth saying, again, defending women's health means defending access to abortion, not just in theory, but in reality. We know, we know that restricting access doesn't make women less likely to end a pregnancy. It just makes abortion 